Welcome to Try with Ping. This is Ping Robert, and in this podcast, we will cover a range of different topics from culture, languages, and underrepresented stories. Join me with a cup of chai and listen to these stories. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Try with Ping. Today, we again invited Aggie from last time. Hi, Aggie. Hi, Ping. It's good <laughs> to see you again. Or it's it's good to talk to you again. Yeah, definitely. For the listeners who don't know Aggie, um, she came previously on an episode talking about um, she being an interpreter and also an interpreter trainer. Um, so if you missed that episode, I'll put a link below um, the episode notes so you can click and then listen to her stories. Today. We're gonna have a very special format, which I have been trying to do for a long time, but like she will be the first one to do it with me. So today we're gonna do like a conversation dialogue style with some prompts and talk about our experience、um, as international students and transitioning to international、uh, professionals. Are you ready, Aggie? I'm one hundred percent ready. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So I will drop the prompt, and then you will go first, and then I will go later. Yeah. So、uh, question、okay. number one. Do you have a question before、uh, um, we start? Um. No, I don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then in, in the process, if you have questions, you can always ask me. Okay. Yeah. Like for example, like you're curious, curious about what part of my life are experienced, then you can always ask. Yes. Yeah.、Sounds、okay.、Good. Prompt number one: Tell us a little bit about your background when growing up, and how did you come to the U.S. and why the U.S. So, <laughs>、uh, what? <laughs> did you forget? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I was just waiting for the cue. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead, Aggie. <laughs> okay. So,、um, I moved to the U.S. Um, when I was seventeen, going eighteen, so that I guess like yeah, seventeen. So that was in two thousand and four, and、um, the reason why I moved to the U.S.、Um, it was for college, and why、um, in the United States? Well, my dad、um, has a friend、um, who went to University of Oklahoma, and he well. You know, my dad talked to his friends. Well, I'm thinking to send Augie、um, to study.、Um, you know, outside Indonesia,、um, I'm thinking about the United States because it has the best education system. That's what my dad. Do you have any recommendations? And obviously, his friend who is biased. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna say biased. He said, <laughs> "Of course,、yeah. you know, the United States has the best education system,、mm -hmm. and、um, I." Recommended Aggie to, you know, to check out University of Oklahoma.、Mm -hmm. um, University of Oklahoma has really great,、um, you know, business program for Aggie,、mm -hmm. and、um, that's how my dad sent me there. And the thing is, you know,、um, we rely on referral, you know,、um, what others refer because then we know they have a great experience, they have a、um, co great college experience. Um, so then,、um, that's how I、um, study at OU.、Um, you know, have a business degree、um, with concentration—well, not concentration, business degree in marketing.、Mm. So that's my bachelor's degree. Yeah, that's、wow. where I got my education. Were you、um, excited before moving here? Well, okay. Let me say. About Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a great, wonderful state. I'm very fortunate and very grateful. <laughs> But wait, no, why do、kidding. I feel there must be a but? <laughs> <laughs> It's a but. <laughs> All right, finish your sentence and then let me hear the but. <laughs> <laughs> What people always say that to me. <laughs> I, I they always think that when I start complimenting, they always said, "Okay, Aggie, cut it out." What is the point? <laughs> well, French in Oklahoma, like Aggie, is complimenting from the bottom of her heart. So go ahead, <laughs> finish your compliment. <laughs> well, okay.、Um, yes, it's 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 a wonderful state in you know, Oklahoma.、Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is,、um, yeah. Well, now there is a but. 
but the thing is um well my 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 expectations about the United States is like New York, you know, like Chicago. Think of the high rise building where a lot of people walk on the street, you know, um, like busy street, um, bustling, hustling, you know, the public transportations, things like that. Um, anyway, so as my plane, you know, get closer to Oklahoma, all I saw was just a bunch of squares and squares and flat building. And so my expectations about the great United States just crashed. But, you know, but that was my first impression. So, again, I thought, what, this is America? Hmm? You know? Um, was um, it yeah. more like a suicide <laughs> for you? <laughs> it was like, a, yes, it was. Um, that's my first thought. It is very country. Very, very country. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. But, um, but, you know, but it's okay. It, it's okay. You know, I, I'm still grateful that my, my parents uh, sent me to study in the United States. You know, University of Oklahoma is, is a great university. So um, I'm so glad that um, I got my education from all you. So, yeah. Um, and, and then I made friends and, you know, um, it was great, you know. But, yeah, it was just like my first impressions about you know, Oklahoma, I, I feel like this is, you know, 180 degrees different than what I would expect, you know, happen. You know, yeah. it, I think it's going to be like New York or Chicago, have my store things. I keep yeah. saying that. I keep saying that to my parents. And my parent, parents said, you know, Aggie, we just sent you to, you know, to study in, in the U.S. And, yeah. you know, you'll always learn something from where you live. And I thought, oh, that was very philosophical. I haven't really thought about that. Thank you, Daddy, for reminding me. I really appreciate it. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Mm, I, let me see. How about, how, about, how about you? Yeah, I know. I was just thinking, like, where to start. So, my parents study in the, in the U.S. And, and also worked a little bit after that. And then, so I was born in the U.S., but we moved back to Taiwan when I was two, two and a half. So I have no memory about the U.S., and I didn't learn any English in the U.S. Um, while growing up, I think English has became my passion. Um, mm-hmm. So that's how I go, went all the way to the language route. So that was my bachelor's degree. And for my master's, it was teaching Chinese as a second language because I, I want to work abroad. Um, so then I need to have something, you know, so since I'm a native speaker, then I just chose that as my subject. Um, I came here because I always wanted to study for a higher degree. Um, Mm -hmm. and then I want to study something else other than languages, um, for me to work in, in different kind of contexts. Of course, I love being in the higher education, um, mm-hmm. but I also felt like because I marry an Indian husband, there might be some opportunities for me to move back to India, but like there might not be a university in, in the area, right? So then I was thinking maybe I can start a language center or a cultural center, that kind of thing. Um, so then I would need a PhD because in, I, I do, I feel in Asia as a female um, and especially I look very young so I need a degree to support my expertise because mm-hmm. in Asia like I feel the the experience that I have people usually just judge me by how I look and because you you know you, you hear from our conversations I'm very lively and I, I don't really talk so seriously about th- something so then yeah. it's like I, if I want to achieve to a certain level and maintain that life quality, I need to get more education. So that's how we came to the U.S. And also it's easier for both uh, me and Louis to work here because I have the citizenship and then he can, I'm, I'm a dual citizen, so he can get a green card through the marriage. Um, so like, I never really consider another country for my higher education. That's Ooh. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's very different, but it's also like 
my first time to really live in the U.S. since 2017. So a lot of people felt like we probably have been here for a long time, but actually not. We have American friends abroad, but it's pretty new. Yeah. So Wait, that, so... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So you met Luis in Taiwan? Oh, we met in India. So I was working there before coming to the U.S. for three years. Oh, <laughs> I didn't nope. know that. Yeah. Did you ever, did you tell me about this before? Oh my oh, gosh. Probably not. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right then. Yeah, that's then, okay. You know, okay. If, I mean, if you ever told me that I probably zone out then. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> why, why do you, oh, okay. So I never mentioned it. <laughs> Okay, you never mentioned it. Okay, okay, Probably. that's good. Okay, yeah, because that, we talk so the... much about interpretation and all that, right? Oh, so that's then we, so true. Yeah, yeah, we didn't even cover about our family history. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I feel, I feel better. Wait, but yeah. I have a question for you, Aggie. Yes. Are, you, uh -huh. are your parents or family here in the U.S. or they're still back in Indonesia? And where they're... are they in Indonesia? Sure. Uh, yeah, they are still back in Indonesia. My parents, they don't want to live in the United States okay. um, because they, you know, they have their, uh, they, they already have um, their life in Indonesia and they don't want to adjust and start all over again, like from zero. You know what I'm saying? God, yeah, um, yeah. My, my, my dad, like he, you know, owns like restaurant business and, mm -hmm. um, and then my mom, she, um, she teach at the university mm. and yeah um anyways i they they, they already have their life set in yeah. indonesia yeah. they 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 would like to visit um we you know they were supposed to come visit us in june um you know and then Same. yeah for for my and then my sister is supposed to get married um in june that's why like they're my parents were supposed to come here, but, you know, with the COVID and everything yeah. got postponed till next year. So how many siblings do you have? I have two siblings. Okay. Um, and mm -hmm. they're here? Yes. Well, my sister, um, she um, lives in Delaware. Um, okay. She is working on her PhD. Um, and uh, my brother, he lives in Toronto because he has a job there. So. Okay. Got it. Got it. And where are your parents in Indonesia? Oh, my goodness. See, I forgot. I know no you worry. asked me about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it so um, it's in a suburb city. It's called Bogor. Okay. Uh, Bogor is about, you know, with the traffic jam and, you know, it's just, you know, Indonesia is always like traffic jam everywhere. So it's about like two hours uh, from the capital city. Um. Jakarta, yeah. So, got it. Okay. Well, only two hours from Jakarta. That's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. it is, and it's you know it's in higher elevation. Yeah. Um, because Jakarta is prone to flooding. I mean, Bogor still get flood, but you know, um, it's not as much as the flood in Jakarta. So, all right. Question number two, what is the most incredible thing that you experienced after you came to the U.S.? You know, what is really great about the United States is that that's how I got exposed to other cultures. Isn't that crazy? Like when I live in Indonesia, all I know, you know, for my whole life um, is my own culture. You know, yes, like we have... Um, you know, Indonesia is huge and um, the cultures are different from every province, even like from um, other cities, you know, they have their own unique things. But that's all I know about, you know, culture. I only know about my own culture. I heard about other culture, about, you know, French culture, about the European, the Australians, you know, other country, but not as... Um, you know what's that the word like not as um thorough is it called thorough yeah i mean yeah, it, well, you, not it, as involved not not as involved exactly yeah. not as involved as when i moved um to united states mm -hmm. and that's how i taste like different kind of international dishes like from other countries it was great and that's how i learned about well you know watch about you know performances from 
um, other countries um, represented by international students in my college. It was great. I learned about other people's cultures by going to the United States. You know, I feel like now um, I'm more aware about other cultures. Um, I learn about, you know, what kind of foods and the dances. Well, I don't learn, but, you know, kind of like have that knowledge, you know, the capital cities, you know, things like that. Um, so it, it was very, it, you know, it was very interesting. I'm, I'm very fortunate that, you know, um, with the, anyways, I'm not crazy. Like that's how I learn about the people's cultures. And I feel like, you know, United States has a really good um, um, education system. Um, I feel like, you know, the university has resources um, for students like me, uh, <clears throat> you know, English is not my first language. So then, you know, writing um, can always be challenging for me. Um, and But they have that, you know, the writing center. Um, sometimes I struggle, when I struggle with math or physics, um, they also have that the tutoring. So it, it was great. Um, you know, like the highway system. Um, yes, Oklahoma doesn't really have great transportations, but, you know, everything is... It's easy, you know, it's not as complicated. Sometimes the regulation can be complicated in Indonesia, but I think that the United States, are, you know, trying to make things a lot easier, at least in my opinion. And I feel like people are very friendly. People are, you know, hospitable. Yeah. Um, at, at, at least, you know, in my experience, you know, other mm-hmm. people may not have, may not have the same experience. So, yeah. Do you still go back to Indonesia? Um, when was the last time I went to Indonesia? Um, maybe for two, oh, let's see, 2016. Oh, okay. So it's not like a fixed or seven. timing or for no. that you go back? Yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't really gone back to my home country. It's just usually it's my parents who, yeah. you know, come visit us because all their kids, you know, are in are here. Are here, yeah. and um, you know, in Indonesia they only have like two cats. Mm. Um, and so sometimes my parents like get lonely and they miss their, their children, and sometimes they they get excited when they become like host parents. You know, some. Sometimes they, um, there are that the international exchange program where they have, um, you know, for the homestay um, where kids like stay for like a couple of weeks, you know, um, oh. in Indonesia. So like my, my parents are, you know, one of that, that um, host awesome. for the homestay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow. Oh, I think it's also kind of becoming challenging when the kids are grown um, and also married. Right. Has your husband traveled back with you? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Oh, I guess. Like, what about your siblings? Are they married? S- yes. All my siblings are married. Yeah. Yeah. And are they married with Americans or like Indonesians or other nationalities? So my brother, um, he married Indonesian. Um, his um, his wife is very nice. Oh my goodness! Like she has really great personality, and I'm so 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 glad that like you know she becomes like my brother's wife. Like they've been dating for like seven eight years. It's crazy. So I'm wow. so glad. Yeah, yes, finally. Yeah. Like you know, it's about time you to get married. Yeah. Um, my sister she got married um last year. Okay. Um. Yeah. So so she let's see, last August. Um. Anyway, um, yes, she got married um, because she have always, you know, wanted to get married young, mm-hmm. and and you know, we as a family we support her decision. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but you know, um, we're all a happy family. So that's yeah. all I can say. Yep, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Hmm. Now my turn. Yes, Incredible your turn. Things I experienced after I came. Um, I think it was quite incredible that without a car, we can't go anywhere. <laughs> Especially here in Colorado. It is so hard. I remember when I was in Taiwan. I don't know about you. I don't, but I, I, I've been to Jakarta once. So there are a lot of scooters around. In Taiwan, is the same. So I always 
ride my scooter around in my city, or even like in the cities that I went to college. To it, it mm-hmm. it's just a lot easier to move around with a cheaper cost. And driving was not really an option for me because it's so hard to get a parking, and also I don't have a car. So either it's driving my parents' car or it's just scooter is so much easier. But here, no. <laughs> I remember the first. Uh, let me see. Probably five months, we didn't、mm-hmm. have a car, and then so. You know, doing grocery was so was so difficult. Yeah, like the closest、uh, supermarket, King Super, was like twenty five minutes walk. And then we live in the university area, you know, so so like people just took bus, um, or you know they carpool. But it's it was just not easy because like I I don't know it. I think car has become an essential thing, but but I also felt like it it was so it still is very expensive to maintain it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 very uh, it's very challenging um, not having a you know personal transportation. Yeah,、um, yeah, you know, relying relying on bus. Um, yeah, I and remember that when I. Just moved to Oklahoma.、Mm. Um, you know, I I get so confused like navigate、um, the bus system. But then, like you know, you know, when I talk to people, like people explain to me, like, well, this is how, like, the bus system works. And okay,、um, now I I you know, then then I got it because then I happened to be waiting at a different bus stop. And I was like, wait a minute, why is not taking to my apartment? <laughs> And then you found out it was wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was like supposed to like wait on the opposite bus stop. Oh,、um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember. And then later, I became more familiar with taking a bus. But like in the winter, it snows. So like there were times that I was waiting there, and then like twenty minutes later, it still hasn't come. So I'm like, I'm frozen here. So But, yeah. yeah, right. And then it's just like. I felt like when that kind of situation, all the loneliness or homesickness, it just came up. It's just like, why am I here? Why is it so difficult? Why don't we have everything we need? But why is it so difficult to just to go home?、Um, and and yeah, that's just so different. And also, like people will say, like, why don't you take taxi, right, or the cab? But like, so when I remember the first year when I came here. In Denver, we wanted to go to church、uh, mm-hmm. on Sundays, so it would take about twenty dollars one way for us to go to the church that we want to go. Of course, like later become cheaper, but like still, if we do like Uber pool, like two people,、yeah. it's still like maybe fifteen dollars.、Mm-hmm. And then so if if we wanna do a round trip, it's thirty dollars. I don't make thirty dollars an hour, you know. <laughs> so it's like. I we were really in a almost almost kind of like a poverty line because I worked so hard and then Louis couldn't work for the whole year, so、uh, we really、right. had very limited budget. And,、right. and that's like that's also the thing. Like church people always provide transportation. They always ask like we can drop you and all that, but like it is not our habit to ask people to help us. And, right, and I find it challenging because, like, maybe we will have to wait until people's free, and then they will drop us home, or、mm-hmm. like, it's just not as convenient. Um, and you know the face thing. I don't know if you have the face culture, but it's just like we. I don't really want to bother people as much as I can. I I mean I feel yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean it's just I mean I. You know, I was raised to, to not, you know,、Other、constantly,、uh, right? Not yeah. yeah, constantly asking for help. I mean, I, because I, I mean, I feel that when we ask for help, like all the time, I feel like there is kind of like a burden inside my my heart, and I feel like, oh my gosh, like I, I've been asking that person like so many times, and I feel really bad. Yeah.、Um, even though you know, if that person, like, after one hundred percent, genuinely wanted to help, yeah. But still, you know, it's it's 
it's just how I was raised, you know, like I will feel them. that I owe them something, like mm, owe them a favor. Yes. yes. And that's yes. just like I know that we should help each other, you know, and then as we're friends and all that, but like it's just like uh I really don't want to bother people. Right. I hear you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Are you ready for the next prompt? Yes, ready for the next prompt. Yeah. What are the things that you find comfort with? About wait, I forgot. Comfort about about Anything. the United States. Yeah, yeah. Like um, comfort. Well, you know, I mean, this is another great thing about. I guess, like when we are talking about comfort, um, I am so glad. Even in Oklahoma, there are Asian grocery store. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we're still going back to our cultural roots. <laughs> yes, um, I, I mean, I didn't know. Okay, in the beginning, I didn't know that there was you know Asian grocery store, and I was just so worried um, because I remember that when I went to, um, you know, just the mainstream supermarket, you know, Walmart, um, it was all that the mainstream product were like what you know the local people would eat. Uh, but I I do miss you know like my 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 food my my people's food I'm just my the Indonesian people's food I'll just like put it that way. Um, the good thing is um, before I moved to the United States, I contact the International Student Association. I ask if there are um, other Indonesians um, or if there's any you know kind of like association or something or or I didn't say association I said club. And so that's how I get connect, connect, connected with other Indonesians. And, you know, they help me with a lot of stuff, um, you know, including like, hey, don't worry about, you know, food because there is like that Asian grocery store. So mm-hmm. I'm so glad that I learned that 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 was fast. Like, yes, mm-hmm. there's like in this like Asian grocery store. I found my... Um, my uh, my sweet Indonesian sweet soy sauce. I found that the ah. um, the Indonesian instant noodles. So that was really nice. Yeah. yeah. Right. So okay, uh, uh, a sub question. Sure, but, when, yes. when you are super homesick, or you just really have a bad day, and then you need some um, comfort food, what would you eat? Um. So when I was really like homesick, um, I, I remember that moment. Yeah, the first six months, it was, like, really hard um, because I miss my parents a lot. Um, And, you know, I would get, like, the instant noodle. Um, It's called Indomie. Yeah! Um, I love them. Do you know, like, we usually buy, like, a a whole carton of it? Like, 30 Indomie in there. We love it! You you eat Indomie? No, like, that's my way. brother's one of the favorites. I I eat Indomie, but like, it, it was not the comfort food. But it's like you guys eat that as a comfort food. Uh, well, at least to me, like Woo-hoo. I eat that, you know, uh, Indomie <laughs> because it's just so easy. You know, um, when I when I was in college, like I live in the in the dorm, and you know, I don't want. I mean, we do have the communal kitchen, but we yeah. also have the cafeteria. But yeah. then when I was like really homesick, I'll just buy that in San Rolo and then heat it up in the microwave. Yeah. So, yeah. So for those people who don't know, Indomie is a kind of instant noodle. Um, comparing to the ramen kind, Indomie is a dried noodle, right? So you kind of, you you cook it and then when the noodles are is soft, then you add some powders or like the the spices. And then it's very savory, very satisfying. I'm not paid to say this, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so it so Indomie is Indomie is a is a brand. They actually have different um well different flavors and they have the soup versions. Mm. And I think that the one that you have is called Indomie Mi Goreng. Mm-hmm. Um the fried the fried well they call it fried noodle because like yes. it's like dry noodle, like you yeah, drain yeah, the yeah. water. Yeah. Um I think that that's what you have. That was like really good. But uh my my favorite yeah. Indom oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you like the other one? <laughs> I I like the other the other Indomie versions that <gasps> you know with with the broth, you know, uh, soup, and especially when yeah. it was so cold and it was snowing, like oh my gosh, oh, yeah, like it just soup? yeah, it's yeah. so um, heartwarming. What's the name yeah. of it? 
Um, well, it's called Indomie, but the one that I have is Indomie Sotomi. Sotomi. Um, okay. Yeah, Sotomi. Um, but but they have they have they have many many kind of flavors in. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'll give it a try, and then and then we will. I will need the names for the episode notes for listeners who are interested to try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my! I was How gonna about, say the same. How about you? What? So, like, uh, what, so is, I, what is? What is? Yeah. 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 Sorry. So I answer this one and then go back to the question. I will um, probably also have a Taiwanese instant noodle. Um, it it is just easy, and I think. Because in my family, our culture is more for the noodles instead of rice. So,、mm-hmm. like, I found it the same as my brother. So now my brother is also in Denver. So three of us,、um, I re- we're staying together in the in the same home. I just realized both of us were the to go food is still、mm-hmm. noodles, and I think、um. that has to do with like growing up. My mom always whip up noodles for us, and then with the broth, with the soup.、Um, I, I also realized that soup has become、um, my culture. Like, yeah, if I don't have soup in the winter, like I、mm. feel that meal was not completed. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's、right? you know what that's you know what that is so interesting because guess what? Yeah, in in at least in my culture in Indonesia, yeah, our people's food. Like, if we don't eat rice, then the meal is not complete. Like, we can have. We can have bread. We can have sausage, but if、yeah. there is no rice, it's not complete the meal. Well, many of my friends will say the same thing. I'm just, I just grew up eating noodles, so I, I like noodles. I can, and then right now, like I adjusted to the culture, so I can do without rice.、Um, mm-hmm. It's just like you know, you know, in the winter, I cannot tolerate people just have a sandwich, and it's cold. Like if it's a grilled sandwich. Fine, but like if it's a cold meal, I'm like I need something more. I'm feeling cold and not so energetic after the food. Interesting, because、yeah. that's how I feel about cold sandwich、um, until today. Unless <laughs> and, 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 unless that is the only meal I have, the only、yeah. food I can eat, then yes, I'll eat cold sandwich. But I, I'm not a big fan of cold sandwich.、Uh, I think they said this is like a. An Asian stomach that we're having, because it's like、Wait. Americans will really just have a sandwich and then grab and go. That's it, or even salad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I But, I was yeah my I yeah. mean I don't know, but there's something about I guess my stomach disagree with me when I eat cold sandwich. I don't know with you, but、yeah. I found my brother also kind of have similar. Yeah. Same here. Same here. I well, I can I I can understand because like for a lot of people, they can just grab a salad in the winter and then they don't feel cold. They might have、mm-hmm. like soup, like from a can or like coffee or tea later. I I actually asked my American classmates about that question. I'm like, don't you feel cold after eating that? They're like, it's okay. Like we'll have tea later. Or, but for me, it's just like me. Tea and coffee is not. Like a meal thing. Yeah, I I need something savory and warm. Exactly right. Yeah. Something yeah. savory. <laughs> yeah, and then I also okay. Going back to the question, where what do I find comfort with? I I really like the nature here. I mean, in Colorado,、uh, I think it's a lot quieter and less crowded than the coast areas.、Um, Wait, but, really? Yeah. In, yeah. Including including I seventy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I think it's a lot of nature, right? It's still not that many people, and of course,、yeah. like people are crowded on the highways. But like, I, I, I don't go to the highway all the time, so I enjoy the quietness, the cleanness. I don't know about Aurora though, but the the place that I live in, where I have been hanging out, and it's pretty quiet. What do you think? Um, about what? About the mountains or about the yeah. highways? Yeah.、Okay. What happened to I seventy? <laughs> <laughs> what about the I seventy? Tell tell the、um, tell the listeners about that. Okay. First of all, there is always something going on on I seventy, and、okay. here's the thing about 
the beautiful state of Colorado. I love Colorado. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like Colorado is like my second home. Sorry, I have to say second home because for some will always be Indonesia. Yes. And um, the thing is, you know, when we go to the mountain, when I go to the mountain, um, I always have to take, at least for me, I have to take like I-70. Either going there or like coming back on weekends, that I-70 is always packed with cars. Do you, did you have that problem? Okay, maybe like... Well, okay, I don't maybe. drive that much. And especially we only oh. have one car. So that's mm-hmm. why I, I stood there in the snow, right? Because I took the bus or the RTD, the light rail, the train. So mm-hmm. I don't really drive that much. Only in the summer when I'm off school, then I'll drive sometimes to different places. But I-70 isn't the one I usually take. Okay, gotcha. I-25. I can relate to I-25. A lot of traffic and accidents. I-25. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Don't get I- us started. <laughs> I-25 is so crowded. Um, yeah. I have to take, like, I-25 um, south. Um, I don't know why they took me to I-25 I- south. So it was, like, Highway 6 and then to I-25 South. Yeah. But then, like, coming back, took, like, 2 to 5 North. Mm. I don't know. Don't yeah. ask me. I only follow GPS. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Well, the people in Colorado might understand what we're saying, but what we're saying to the listeners is both me and Agi don't like traffic. That yes, was I don't lame, like, lame, lame. Conclusion. I don't like traffic. I don't like when it's just so crowded. Um, yeah. You know, the thing is, um, I was scared driving on the highway. Okay. I I used to. I used to be scared. Okay. So um, I used to take on highway road, and um, you know. I said from point A to point B um, with highway that would take like 20, that's a 25 minutes. Yeah. Well, without highway would take like 15 minutes. Then yeah. I used to take that 15 minutes, but then I've come to realization, well, this is not efficient, you know, not, like yeah. time wise, yeah. I could have done something else that is more productive. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, you know, in the U.S., like we have to learn how to drive on highway. Mm-hmm. Um, I was so scared. Um, but, um, you know, I think that the more we, the more I drive or spend my time driving on the highway, then the more I feel more confident. Yes, you know, we, we never know what's going to happen. I, I, there's one time that I saw, like, there's, you know, a car accident. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my God, it's, like, so scary. But then, like, you know what? If it's meant to be, and it's meant to be, I think yeah. that we we just have to be um, careful. And you know, I, I I feel like okay, you know what? I can do this. I can drive on highway. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. I. How long does it take for you to get comfortable driving on the highway? Okay, I know, like this is so crazy, but um, that's okay. Everyone <laughs> has their own stories. <laughs> <laughs> um. I started driving on highway like more um, about like a year. So before that, wait, what? I what? know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Isn't that crazy? That's why I told you like it's crazy. <laughs> that, um, that's even after we have met, because we have known each other for like what, yeah. like like almost two years now, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. we met in two thousand eighteen. Yep. So it's pretty recent. Whoa. I know. Okay. Well, I'm proud of you because you conquered your fear. I know I conquered my fears and, you know, it's just, I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, in, I guess like in, in Texas, I, you know, rely on anyways. um, I, I, you know, I have like someone like to drive me. um, And even if, you know, when I drove in Texas, always like the surrounding city. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really, really like drive you know, on a highway yeah, and same yeah. thing in Oklahoma. Like always I would probably, I would go with my friends yeah. who say, let's go to Oklahoma city. Like, let's do carpool. Anyone needs to go to the Asian grocery store. And it was like with 
you know, with the campus, it's, it's right there. You know, I don't really have to drive that much, but anyway, so yes. Anyway. Oh, since we're talking about driving, I do have something to share. Okay. Um, it is, yeah. So as I mentioned that I usually ride a uh, real scooters. Well, I think here they call it moped. Scooter mm-hmm. is more like the, the one that without electricity or the gas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we call it a scooter or motorcycle um and so i really started driving when i came here so i have been driving in in taiwan like to church and to my grandparents house Mm -hmm. which is like super easy because the city i come from is called kaohsiung it is the roads are wide and parking is a lot easier to find comparing to taipei the capital um, yeah. But that that was it. Like I only drive to the places I already know, and I know without it, like looking at a GPS. But here, everywhere, I have to put on my phone and put on GPS because one, all the street names are so different and so new in a different language. And also, I come from like Kaohsiung is a city which we call it like a chessboard street format so everything is kind of parallel so you know Mm -hmm. if you know like north or south or west or east then you just know how to get get it it's like every most of the major streets are straight so then you know that next intersection you turn you will find the other street but here i don't know if it's a geography or something like that but like a lot of those streets are not straight even like yeah. Colorado or University or even Broadway, like mm-hmm. at some parts they're straight, but like at the end of it, so for example, where I live, the university is not straight anymore or Colorado Boulevard. So then gotcha. it's really hard for me to remember roads and all. Um, right. Yeah. I remember when we first moved here, it was about, uh, we moved here 2017, August, and then I started driving crazily because we moved to um away from the university in april Mm. 2018 and when my parents here they helped us to move and that was the the first time i drove to the highway at that time my brother was already here for two years so he came Mm. two years earlier before uh, we did and then he has been driving all the way through in taiwan uh, and here so he has no problem but for me I had to take my mom and Lewis because Lewis could not get his um, driver's license because he didn't have, huh, what was that? Like he didn't get any ID because he was waiting for the green card and oh, he, gotcha. he couldn't have his social security. So he couldn't have his driver's license. Okay. That's just how complicated we can definitely open another episode about immigration, but so then I had to drive. And then good for him because he didn't drive either in India. So then mm. I remember the first time I drove to, uh, where was it? Like Long Tree, American mm. Furniture. So to look out, like, look for some furniture. And that was the first time I drove on I-25. Mm-hmm. And, and I had to follow my brother and it was nerve wracking. Like when when I parked and everyone gets out of the car, I had to mm. literally take ten minutes to calm down because <laughs> it was super, <laughs> super scary to be on the highway. The how fast can we go here? Sixty five. Sixty, yes, at least about that. Like sixty five. Um, and it's sixty five yeah. miles, so it's probably like what eighty kilometers. I don't know what that the conversions, but it okay. is so, it's just a lot faster than than in Taiwan. Yeah, and you know what makes me worried sometimes is when people tailgating. It's like, yeah. dude, just go bypass me. I know. Why do it's you like have one second. to be? Why do you have to be so close to me? I am on the middle lane. I there know. is a left lane. Please do like bypass. Yeah. Um. It. You know. It's yeah. It. It's just sometimes I feel like, dude, what are you thinking? Like, what if I have to do sudden break, and you yeah. didn't have time to like, break on time. You know. I know. Um, yeah. You can have an accident within a second. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe there's, that's why. Maybe that's why there's always traffic because of the accidents on I twenty five. 
Yeah, <laughs> I twenty five is always packed. But you know what? I actually got into like well, it was kind of like mini car accident like last last uh, last September or last yeah. August. Yeah. Um. And it, it turned out well. There were actually three cars involved in the accident. So what happened is the car behind me hit my car because that well that car didn't have time to brake because the car behind the other well the other car you know was like speeding and the driver was actually busy looking at his phone. What? Yep. Yeah, was it a serial ac- accident? Yeah, it was like oh yeah, it was gosh. like serious accident because there were like three cars involved with me. To like there are three, but yes, the um, the police like rule out that yes, it is that that person who you know responsible for my car and the car behind me, and plus like he was speeding. He wasn't supposed to be speeding. I mean, that was like in Auraria Parkway, and he was looking at his phone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't text and drive, guys. It's, it's, it's exactly that's like the moral of the story. You know, sometimes like when I was supposed to meet with my friends, and then um, I, I was like, okay, well, how far are you? And then like, oh, like I'm driving right now, and I said, stop, just, Ugh, I'll see yeah. you when you get here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I feel you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you don't feel comfortable being here? Um. Well, let's see. I mm. think that um, so that's a like good driving, but you know, which I finally conquered. I mean, I mean, until today, you know, sometimes I'm like, Ooh, you know, but you know, we we gotta do what we need to do, right? <laughs> um, Absolutely, yeah. You know, so I think that sometimes um, when I need to find the informations, um, um, you know, about uh, I'm not gonna say. Um, you know, just like information in in general about taxes and things like that, I mm-hmm. I found can be a little bit you know confusing. Um, but you know, I I think that people have been like really helpful and yeah. Um, but you know, obviously, like you know, when I'm trying to renew my driver's license, yeah. I sometimes you know the customer service wasn't that great. But you know what? Mm-hmm. So I just feel like okay, maybe like that person was having like a bad issue, like maybe mm. just having something in the morning, and then that's why they were not like super nice. But it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. It's human being things happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 mm. yeah. I don't like the living cost or eating out. The cost for eating out is so high, or the tipping system. Oh my goodness! Yes, about the tipping system. It's 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 just like you know. I th- that's another thing. Actually, you know what? When I first moved, I was so confused about tipping because I when I went out with my friends uh, mm-hmm. in Indonesia, we we didn't tip like mm-hmm. we did we did we didn't tip the workers because everything like the bill also includes what they call like service charge. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Which is very, um, which is very common. So, like, we don't have to tip. Like, it's already there. The bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, in here, you know, like tipping, like out of a courtesy, and yeah. you know, what is defined as a great service? And they said, mm-hmm. well, if you have like five years experience, you need to tip twenty percent. Well, yeah. what about the eighteen percent? What about the fifteen percent? And they said, yeah. like, well, fifteen percent if you're not so happy. What if you get like horrible customer service experience? Do you still have to tip? But then, yeah. like, I learned that well, um, the food workers, uh, like the waitress, yeah. sometimes they don't get paid at all. Like they only rely one hundred percent from tipping, mm-hmm. and that's how I feel like. Oh my goodness, that would be really, really, really sad if you know they didn't make any income because mm. that they didn't get tip or like yeah. that they. Or, or, or like the restaurant pay them, but it's like a dollar or like two dollars per hour. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, of course, I don't like it, but you know, I also worked in a restaurant before over here. Like, I never thought I would be working in a restaurant here in the U.S. But um, after going in, and then I, I think the whole system was set up differently in mm-hmm. in Taiwan. You can never 
I can never re rely on working a restaurant as a server and to afford all my living expenses, especially yeah. living away from my parents' house. But yeah. here, um, so I, if I'm not wrong, like listeners, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Comment down below. <laughs> Let us know um, because, you know, we're just here. I'm only here for less than three years. Um, so it, so every state has a minimum wage. So it's paid by hourly. So, for example, if I go into a restaurant and I work there, so each hour I'll get paid maybe $7 right here, like in Colorado. And then, so this is the minimum wage. It's not even the hourly wage. So if it's, um, for example, for the retail stores, if you go to a supermarket or something like where you don't tip, you don't get tip. So then it's a flat rate. So maybe it's like, I think that that minimum wage is like ten fifty right now, maybe something like that. But if you're a server, then you get lower than that. And then the tip will go to your income. So then, yes, what you said is true is like if you don't tip that person um yeah they they will have a cut in their in their hourly rate yeah. um but if you work in fancy restaurants just imagine like so it's heavily influenced by how much you pay for the food if it's a fancy restaurant the service can actually make a great living out of that you know they can make probably yeah. 30 or 40k annually and then they can have a great life um, but that will never happen in, in my culture because it's just like, it's so minimum. So you can't, you, you have to, I don't know, you, you probably have to be so tired and like work maybe 60 hours a week to, to afford like rent and everything. Yeah. So I guess it's also set up like the labor here is a lot more expensive than in Taiwan. Um, but it's just like from the consumer's side. It is right. so expensive to eat out. And it's it's basically for me is a privilege to eat out. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know what? I, okay. I So let's go back to the tipping. Um, I remember, what did I read? Um, I remember that I was like sitting in my own business waiting for my airplane. Mm -hmm. um, I was at the airport and I think that I was reading um, – um, I was reading news. I can't remember. Maybe it's from BuzzFeed or maybe mm -hmm. from. Anyway, um, I was reading an article about a bartender in New York or Manhattan, yeah. and then he um, he went to or like he he went to school and then I guess like he has a master's degree, but he chose to become a bartender. Yeah, yeah. And he said that. He makes like eighty thousand. I that's just crazy. But isn't like, that crazy? How? I but, mean, how? Uh, how is it even? I mean, isn't it crazy? Like how? I know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So let me ask you: If you are a carpenter, electrician, or technician that you know go to people's house or do things um, for those people at home, uh, and you know, in people's home, do you get paid a lot in back home? Um. Not really. I mean, really, usually right? the people yeah. people who make who make a lot of money is the owner of that plumbing or that carpenter company. Yeah, um, I think proportionate. Uh, proportionate. I don't even know if it's a word. Pro racial. Mm, proportionately, yeah. Yeah. here it's a lot higher. If you do something with your hands, yeah, like carpenter, electrician, plumber, they charge so much. They, they they do charge a lot. Yeah. I mean, I think. I mean, I I mean, I I think that here in in, in the U.S. even, mm -hmm. um, you know, like servers, um, they they can travel abroad, they can visit other countries, and you know, have vacation. Yeah. Um, but you know, unfortunately, in Indonesia, working as a server, they 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 cannot afford to you know. To visit other country yeah. or even to other city because the cost will be expensive. Mm. But anyway, yes, eating out is definitely a privilege. I do notice that um, when I look at my budget, like, oh my goodness, I yeah. spend majority, well, not majority, but I spend quite an um, amount of money from eating out and yeah. cooking actually so much cheaper. 
Oh, so much. It's even like probably like ten percent of what you're paying outside. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So like we have to like a lot of so when I went back to Taiwan, a lot of people say, "Oh my god, I saw your picture. Are you cooking this and that? Like you're so good at cooking." And I'm like, uh, uh, "I'm not gonna cook in Taiwan." <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm gonna take a break. It's like I was forced to cook outside of Taiwan, but like uh-huh. now I'm back home. I'm gonna eat out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, the, the the food is the food is cheap in Indonesia. I mean, yes. It's not necessary um, to be cheaper to uh, cook at home in Taiwan. I actually did some calculation, but it's just healthier. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, not cheaper, yeah. healthier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready for the next prompt? Yes. Yeah. Wait, what um, number? What number are we? So I think we, we already talked about number four. So number four okay. and number six is like what? We, what do we feel comfortable with? So I'm just okay. gonna jump to number five. Okay. How has been your social life, or like where do you build your social circles? Um. In Colorado or in general, or like during the COVID, which one? Mm, in general. Oh, in general. I mean, well, so I made friends um, from college, obviously, but I think that as you know, we graduated and everyone, you know, get married and have kids. You know, we're just kind of like parting away. You know, like everyone have their own routine, um, but. You know, social life wise, um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that I went to college and that's how I make friends. Um, but I mean, I think that here in Colorado, because like I didn't know anybody. Well, I'm, and I kind of know my dad. My my dad has a friends, but you know, they are like my dad's age, so we don't really have, you know, thing in common. But anyway, um, yeah, you know, I, I think it's. it's um, I, I, um, I made friends in Colorado from, um, you know, from my call, um, what do you call that? Um, what do you call that? People who work in the same company with you? Oh, colleagues. 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 Okay. <laughs> Colleague. Colleague. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That's fine. Yes. That's fine. Co-workers. And then, yeah. um, I also joined meetups. Oh, um, what kind of yes. meetups? Yes. So, um, for me, you know, when I moved to Colorado, I didn't really like join it up, but I started like a year ago. Um, I, I try like multiple meetups and, um, but then, you know, only few that I feel click, you know? Mm. Um, so, you know, for those who are new to meetup, I mean, I don't know if you want to explain it, you feel free. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's how I, make more friends here in Colorado. So um, wait, Meetup okay. is a website, right? If I get it right. Yes, Meetup, um, yes. And then Go you ahead. can have different hobby groups or communities or, yeah, probably just like, so for example, if I like Spanish, I will search Spanish Meetup groups and then mm-hmm. there will be like different Meetups or in that group, you can kind of build a community and say like, hey, let's meet this Sunday. Is yep. that how, how it goes? So what kind of meetup groups did you sign up for? So um, a year ago, I um, I tried multiple like meetup groups. Um, that's including like um, just like sushi, like sushi outing. And there's, <laughs> and so there's I know, right? So oh my God, like so, it's so cute. And then there's like, oh, 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 there is like a meetup group like dedicated just for fun. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So what, um, what do you guys do then? Well, okay. Do you, do you mean like can I give the highlights like the meetup groups that I I join? Sure. Um. Um. Okay. And then there is that um the meetup group just for ladies. This like ladies like thirties. Wait, then for like ladies thirties. Oh. And there is also like you know brunch meetup. Those who like to brunch, you know, to go for brunch. Yeah. Um. So um, I try several meetups. Um. But in the end, now, like, I guess as of now, I end up only be active with three, well, no, two, 
okay. to meet to meet up groups. So um, the first one is um, the food and friends. Uh, food and friends. What I really like about that meet up group because it's a group for people who would like to adventure and then try out um, ethnic cuisines. Um, because there are yeah, because there are other meet up groups that you know try out like the fancy restaurants um, mm-hmm. or like the, like the new Americans concept kind of thing, which is really yeah. cool. I, I tried once, yeah. but I'm more geared toward like food and friends because, yeah. you know, um, we are a people who, you know, from other countries, ah. a, a lot, I mean, not yeah. all, but like a lot from other countries. And then like, Mostly either for school or for work or for family. Yeah. And um, we, you know, we try different kind of restaurants. And then we have, um, we used to have potluck for that, obviously, because of the COVID. Yeah. We don't have potluck. But we used to try to have a monthly potluck thing. And oh. then people would bring, like, their own, yeah, their their own, like, um, their homemade uh, dishes. Yeah. So it was, it was a very nice, like, surrounded with, like, really great groups that, you know, we talk about our cultures, you know, mm-hmm. so we have this great conversation. So we learn about the food and we also learn about their country, learn about their culture. I think that food is something that, you know, that, that create like the bonding. It's, it's like a fantastic icebreaker. Mm, definitely. Yes. I, I, I agree. I, and, and, and people who, you know, join these like food and friends. So those who are like out there listening to <laughs> think <laughs> podcasts, um, I, you know, if you would like to, you know, um, I guess make your friends, I totally recommend joining like, food and friends. Um, no fee, nothing like to say no motive. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Not, not, um, mm. yeah. Um, what I think talking? it's a good starting point like for, yeah. for us immigrants when we come to a new place and right, we can yeah. kind of go through like different hobbies or communities and then we can find someone. I don't, I don't think it's that easy to find everyone likable or clickable, clickable or connectable, but at least that's a starting point. It, it, it is like, yeah. especially if you, you know, if you just move to Colorado, move to Denver, and, you know, you don't know people, like, other than, you know, co-workers, and if you want to, like, get to know more people, then, you know, I recommend, you know, join me. There, there's so many hobbies, there are so many clubs, um, if you like crochet, is it called crochet or crochet? I'm sorry, I just don't crochet, know. Crochet, I think. Up. Okay. Yeah, crochet is like, <laughs> almost a, 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 so one single needle knitting. All oh, right. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. And there is like um, a meetup group uh, for those who, you know, who like hiking. And there is like a meetup group for those who like scary stuff. Um, so um, I, I, I try several, mm. but, you know, but, oh, and then there's also, what do you call that? The trivia, where you oh, go, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, go, yeah, yeah. you play games. Yeah, yeah you play games. You're like, yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's like a bingo thing. Um, but anyway, in the yeah. end, um, I'm only active like to meet up groups. Obviously, like no, no event, like nothing yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah. But maybe you know next year when things you know maybe sort of getting back to normal ish. Yeah. Um. There will be more like gathering. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And I would love to join you sometime. Oh my gosh. Being like, I don't think I, oh my God. I don't know. I haven't really talked to you about this. Well, oh. like we never, and it's, so right now we're doing a very specific conversation. Then, so that's why it came up. Like, well, usually we talk about different things and we talk about interpreters and all. So um. yeah, no worries. Like, I'm glad that we're talking about now. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My social social circles. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, how about you? I, I I know that you're active um at your community um what do you My call church? That? Yes, 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 yes. So we go to this Chinese church. Um so people who are Mandarin speakers will go. Um there are lots of Chinese and lots of Taiwanese as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have small groups. That's my, that's 
kind of my main social circles. And, you know, like to relate to what you said, it's like when you moved to Colorado, you didn't know anyone. And that's the same thing happened to us. We didn't know that many people. And then Mm -hmm. I think it's also hard for me. We don't have, I, me and my husband, so we, I don't have my support system. All my friends are not here. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have to start from scratch. And then I don't know if it's the stage of life or it's just a culture. I find it difficult to make friends. It's like people are so polite, but you never know when you can. Yes. Right. So of course, like, Louis and I were so so open. So you have been to our place. And then we, we just love to invite people because we know that's one space that we can connect with other people more. But still, mm-hmm. like, that's it. <laughs> we yeah. I don't have many social circles. Maybe from a university who I work with and all. I feel local classmates or local schoolmates are usually so busy. So then I find it easier to mingle with international students or immigrants yes um i you know i hear yeah it's it's really it's it's really hard i think that i mean i am can i reveal my age Uh sure if you want i don't mind okay so (laughs) okay well okay okay i'm just gonna say um what i know is as i get older you know in my 30s i found it's really hard finding friends i think that because you know as we get older we know what we want we know what we like we know what we prefer um and so i i think that it's 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 chal- it can be challenging finding um you know someone who or people who have you know kind of similar values and you know have similar goals um, or you know it doesn't even have to have similar values or similar goals but you know kind of have like similar interests um, or, or you can just connect. Maybe you're so oh, different, a, but if you can connect. That's so true. Yeah, like yeah. the vibing. Vibe. That's the word. There you go, girl. <laughs> the vibe. The vibe. Yeah, the vibe. Right? No, it's it's true, don't you think? Because yeah. like finding like close friends. Okay, I know this sounds so cliche or whatever you want to call it. That's but, okay. But okay, it finding... makes sense. So that's why we repeat all the time and then we can't. <laughs> <laughs> finding close friend is like finding a soulmate like oh. and, 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 and and I agree with you that yes we can have completely like the opposite attractions we can yeah. be so different yeah. but we gotta have something that connect like glue you know yeah. Um, yeah. like whatever that can you know you know friends have the vibe because you know Sometimes when we meet with people, you know, we have these small talks. But I think that when, you know, to be to be like close friends, yeah. we have to the point that we can be open and then be raw with each other. Mm, that's true. Oh, that's oh true. man, yeah, that's very philosophical. I get to write that down. Thanks for listening to Chai with Ping. Let us hear your voices and stories. Please share this episode, like, and follow us on Instagram at Chai with Ping. You can also email us at chaiwithping at gmail.com. Till next time.